your closet. All right. What's in your closet? Now, I know you've seen commercial says, what's in your wallet? <laughs> but I don't want to know what's in your wallet. <laughs> Some of you may not even have a wallet. wallet. Yeah. But what's in your closet? Yeah. Bones. Mm, Jesus. Now, Hallelujah. Jesus walked in water. We know we read that. He did that to show us that nothing can separate him from getting to us. Not even water can stop Jesus from finding out where you are and when you really need him. He turned water into wine, which shows us he can, he can make something out of nothing. Huh? And he ate and drank with people that sometimes you and I would never want to be caught with. Shows us that uh, everybody here, no matter how bad you think you are, what you've gone through, uh, what happened in your life, that you're still deserving of, of the presence of Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's right. Yes, yes, yes. And then he gave a blind, a blind man's sight to show us that you're never so far out of it that you can't see. Yeah. And, and, and every time he spoke, people rushed to hear what he had to say. Uh -huh. He always drew a crowd. And then he also offended a lot of people. Now watch it now. He did not offend people with arrogance or smart remarks. But he offended people with the truth. There's nothing that hurts more than the truth. When somebody tells you you need Jesus, and you know you're living like a dog, and trying to fly like an angel, that may hurt. Uh, when you know you're fooling around with somebody else's wife or somebody else's husband, and somebody tells you that, that you need Jesus, man, you get an attitude. Yeah. Hey, dog, who do you think you're fooling with, man? <laughs> you know how we are. It doesn't just happen in Detroit. I know that. <laughs> but yet, many of us fail to see this truth because of the stuff we have in our closets. Yeah. All right. This is what we've done. We've created hope by giving power to the spirit of love. We love telling folks I love you and uh, I'm so grateful you, that uh, you're here. And we don't understand that what love is really is. It's not you saying you love somebody. Love is what you do when you love somebody. Amen. Amen. I've never seen Pastor Cameron get overly excited Especially after 47 years because I tell her I love her. I think she knows that by now by the things I do. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. So uh, uh, she's convinced that I love her. Not because I say it often, but because of the things I do to show her that I love her. I remember her birthdays. I remember the special days here. I know the color that she loves. I, I know what she likes to eat. And so uh, I spend the money to make sure I keep my wife happy. Amen. 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 I'm not trying to keep anybody else happy as I keep my wife. Happy wife. Uh, happy life. There's no second lady. Praise the Lord. There's only a first lady. Amen. Only lady. So I want her to know that she's special to me. So I don't, don't just say I love her. I act like I love her. Yes. Uh, I enjoy going shopping with her. I enjoy washing clothes and putting up her clothes. I, I, I enjoy that. I enjoy telling her when she's fixed a great meal to go have your seat and I'll take care of the kitchen. Don't worry about a thing. I don't do that because I, 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 I want to say it. I do it because I love her. I think she deserves that. So we have learned as people of God, sometimes we, we walk in the spirit of love. Which is sometimes phony. Mm. Yeah. Oh God. Oh God. We can talk about somebody all night Saturday and then hug them on Sunday morning. Oh, 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 now. All right now. I'm in trouble. Huh? And we leave after we after we hug them and go back and start talking about them again on Monday. Yeah. You know what? People of God understand this. This is important to every every saint of God. This is not church. Come on. 
That's right. This is a celebration. All right, yeah. That's God's right. been good all week long. That's yeah. right. Kept us. Even when you were speeding down the highway. Yeah. All right, now. I know you saw a sign that said 55. Uh, come on. Come on. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> and you were 70 and looked and said, this car is sure running good. Huh? That's better. But thank God for Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because uh, and it wasn't your skillful driving that, that got you there. <laughs> it was the grace and mercy of God. <laughs> because you were walking in obedience, but God still had mercy. mercy. And when you ran that south side, yep. I know it says S-T-O-P. It does not say slow as you go. <laughs> You walk, you ran to the south side and nobody hit you. Uh-huh. Thank God for Jesus. Yes. Now somebody's saying, Oh Lord. <laughs> he hasn't even started yet. Yeah. Uh, and then we have leaned on our own understanding of things, which gives us a sense of power. Yeah. Just because you have a little knowledge or a couple of degrees. <laughs> Experience a few things. Uh, and now you think you can figure anything out. Oh God, oh God. Huh? Oh God. So you walk in that power of thinking you have some knowledge and understanding. Mm. <laughs> but then the word of God says, lean not. Unto your own understanding. Yeah. Own understanding. Yeah. Hey man, it, uh, you know, it doesn't matter how smart you are, but when you stand next to God, you realize that you're just as dumb as you can be. <laughs> Does somebody hear that, please? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes. So we allow this, this 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 understanding of ours to make us think that we have a sense of power. Oh God. And it ends up being just clutter. Oh Jesus. And Jesus hates clutter. Oh God. Jesus hates it when we fill our hearts and minds with clutter. Yes. Uh, and Mark 11 gives us a good account of what it takes. When he sees clutter, how he wants to clean it up. Yes. The people uh, uh, had an appearance of seeking God. But God said, we're in the temple grounds. Uh, they were selling everything. But they had lost their focus. See, I wonder how many of us sometimes come to church out of routine. Uh -oh. yeah. Yeah. Out of habit. Yeah. Not looking for anything. Yeah. Don't want to do anything. Yeah. I just want the two hours to go ahead and get out of the way so I can go on the rest of my life. Because Golden Corral is waiting on me. It's calling my name. Golden Corral. GC. <laughs> I wonder how many of us like that. People have lost their focus. And so Jesus saw that in the temple they were, they were doing all kinds of crazy things, but they were not really, they didn't come back to worship him. They came to sell and, and to make profit. And so the word of God said he grabbed a stick and, and, and began to, to challenge those that were, that, were, that were selling and turning things over. And he quoted from the book of Isaiah and he said, uh, uh, this is supposed to be a house of prayer but you made a, a den of thieves. Yes. And I think what's happening today in the body of Christ and we are allowing the thief to steal our focus away from Jesus. Oh, Lord. Uh, uh, he's telling us, some of us, that we're cute. Uh -huh. That we're fine and that we're hot. Uh -oh. And someone's looking at you. Yeah. Stay longer. Walk slower. <laughs> <laughs> he said you allow the enemy to steal your focus. <laughs> now every weight would be everything that taught us our lives so that we, we can't find it through Jesus. That's what the word of God is talking about. It's talking about weight. It's not something heavy. But something you and I carry around. Yes, yes, yes. That we really don't need to carry around, but we have a tendency to want to lug it around wherever we go. Mm -hmm. And we don't know how to get rid of it. We, we fall in love with it. We're fond of it, so we hang on to it. Mm -hmm. So we have the clutter we're talking about. For instance, a physical clutter. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about a physical clutter, we're talking about things we hang on to, like, like old books in your house that you know you'll never read. Mm -hmm. Have never read. Mm. But you have them in your house. They're stacked up. And somebody asks you, have you read this book? You have to say, uh, no, not really. <laughs> and old magazines and old clothes and bottles and tools. 
And for some of us old cars, thank you, that we have around that we just won't get rid of. Uh, right, right, right by the church in Detroit, there's a, a person across the street that's got uh, at least five or six cars sitting over there in the driveway and on the side of the yard. And some of those cars have not moved in a year and a half or two years. I know they have moved because they're up on sticks. <laughs> and they're not going to get rid of them. But that's where some of us are. Yes. And listen, the difficulty we have in throwing away things that we no longer need, no longer use. Like that old dress that somebody somebody told you you look hot in it. <laughs> and maybe you put on a little weight now, you can't wear it anyway, but somebody told you you look hot, so you won't get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 that shirt that, that, that says all the girls are are checking you out, gentlemen. That, that shirt that you just won't get up and get rid of because somebody told you. That shirt sure looks good on you. <laughs> the shirt is out of date. It's out of fashion. <laughs> it's going faded. But somebody said I look hot in this shirt. 20 years ago, I'm not getting rid of this. <laughs> and so you have a hard time getting rid of it. Well, don't you understand this? The same difficulty you have in freeing yourself of that clutter. It's the same difficulty you and I have of freeing ourselves from spiritual well, yeah. You know it's there. Yeah. You no longer use it. Mm. It's not benefiting you anything, but you don't want to get rid of it. So we hold on to things that are not edifying or profitable to the, to the body of Christ. Yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah. We hold on to old boyfriend or girlfriend pictures. Old phone numbers. Oh. Nobody saying amen. <laughs> <laughs> I, I caught that. Nobody said amen at all. <laughs> old girlfriend and old boyfriend pictures. <laughs> So you stuck some place hoping your husband and your wife never find them. <laughs> Wait a minute, and then and then we have this somebody that came up to us and spoke a word of prophecy to us. Well, years ago. <laughs> and nothing has come to pass. So maybe that person that spoke prophecy to you. Well, <laughs> and yeah. Listen, I tell the people of God all the time. Don't you let, let anybody just come up to you and start speaking to you. That's right. That's right. That's right. The word of God says you have the right to judge not only the prophecy, but also the prophet. The prophet. That's right. That's right. So if they've been living like a dog, talking about everybody, wait a minute, walking in diso disobedience, uh -huh. I tell people all the time, prophets don't walk. And disobedience. That's right. Oh, that's right. That's right. Oh, God. I'm getting in trouble. I might, as well, I might as well go all the way. I already bought my ticket. Don't worry about trying to get back. Prophets don't walk in disobedience. Because prophets understand that they must be there besides the man of God, a woman of God. And they must be ready to receive a word from God on a daily basis. You always have to speak what God gives you. But a prophet remains in a position to be ready to be used by God, which means you don't have time to be hard-headed. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. Because when you're, the moment you're hard-headed is the time that God wants to use you. And prophets are always accountable. Yes. Always. You know where they are. They want you to know where they are so you can always find them. Amen. 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 Yes. Amen. Amen. I have some prophets in at Faith Church that I, I won't let speak a word to me. And they, they can't tell me nothing. I don't even want to know what time it is. I don't want them to tell me what time it is. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord, because that disobedience, I just will not allow them to say anything at all. Yes. I have a right to tell them to do it. Yes. Yes. And when they want to tell me, God gave me a word for you, Apostle. I said, take it to the take it to the apostle. Take it to the other prophets over there. 
Let them judge it, and then let me know. They'll tell me if I need to hear it. Yeah. <laughs> that way, I don't have time for junk. Yeah. Amen. I, I don't need junk food. I, I, I want to remain healthy and strong and ready to be used by God. Yeah. So prophets. Prophecy is necessary in the body. If somebody gave you a prophet and a prophecy and nothing has happened and nothing has transpired about it, absolutely nothing, then rebuke it and throw it out. It's clutter. Clutter. Yes. Yes. Oh. Yes, 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 yes. Wait a minute. Some of us are staying too busy doing what we what we want to call ministry. Mm -hmm. yeah. well. Instead of spending time with God. Some of us have a tendency to, to want to compare our spirituality with somebody else's. Yeah, yeah. Who are you to tell somebody else and I say? I'm doing okay. it. All right, all right. Because what you saw, right. that means that nobody saw you. Oh, <laughs> you got away with it, you think. Listen, uh, 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 somebody lying and somebody crossing eyes and somebody else is no greater sin. Yeah. Oh, right. Right. Somebody uh, uh, having a drink and somebody committing adultery is it's no greater sin. Yes, 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 yes. yes, 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 yes. So where the church get this thing from of being the church police? Oh. You know, somebody walks in and they made you mad, and all of a sudden now you talk, "Boom!" <laughs> <laughs> Let me see your save card. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, Apostle. That's good. Come on now. I'm not in a position oh, to judge anybody else. <laughs> If you see somebody stumbling and not walking as you believe the word of God tells them to walk, your job is to pray. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Judge not, lest ye be yeah. judged. Yeah. Yeah. And listen, some of us are trying to judge others, need to shut up because yeah. we don't need to be judged ourselves, praise the Lord. How you acting when you went to that store? Huh? Got mad because somebody had 15 items and then 10 items or less. Oh. <laughs> You, can, you should make a talk to him. One, two, yeah. three. <laughs> Seriously? Come on, man. <laughs> well, we're, the, we're the patient ones. We're the temperate ones. We don't get upset because somebody's not doing what we think they should do. I went to a dollar store and this lady came behind me and she said, I, she said, I need a pop. She said, sir, would you buy me a pop? I said, sure. And lady behind her going, oh God, you mean he's not going to buy her a pop? <laughs> I, you know, what I really wanted to say was, it's my it's money. My money. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to no, know, I have a right to do what I want. Yeah. Yeah. If yeah. I want to be a blessing yeah. for somebody else, right. all I can tell you, I, at a certain amount, we take when I go to church. Uh, that the guys standing there with signs are saying, "Help, I'm homeless. Leave. We'll work for food. Uh, no problem. Get anything you can give me out." And I, what I do, I, I put a number of dollars right there in the middle of the seat, and so I get near to where they are. I pull over and I give them a dollar, a couple of dollars. And some folks say. I just want to go out somewhere and get drunk because you know it's not my business. Amen. That's right. Not my business. They just want to go somewhere and get high. That's not my business. That's true. Here's the word God tells me I'm supposed to be a giver. That's right. Hallelujah. And when I give to you and you misuse it, it ain't on you. It's not on me. Nope. It's not on me. But I'm not going to let you stop me from giving. Hallelujah. I don't care. I don't care if you have drunk. You come tell me you need you need a dollar. I'll give you a dollar. Yeah. Yeah. Understand yeah. this, you're taking a man of God's money. Uh -oh. You're not going to get away with it. That's right. Right. Amen. I'm not going to follow you to see what you buy. Yeah. If there's any change left, to say, look. <laughs> 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 but I'm a giver. Yeah. You and I are to practice giving. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. How can we stand to see somebody come, to us, come among us that's hungry or, or thirsty? And we don't try to help them. Because we're not practicing being givers. And when you're not practicing being a giver, then you got clutter. In your closet. 
and the clutter is that you think you don't have to do that. You've already judged them. Wow. What they're going to do, and you think they don't have no right to do it. But you're the same one to go out and curse somebody else. All right. Watch out. Ooh, ooh, Jesus. Mm -hmm. And then put a sign in your car saying, Honk if you're saved. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, picture this. Somebody going on the road 75 miles an hour, 55 miles an hour. You think I sign in the back of the car saying, Honk if you love the Lord. <laughs> Some folks didn't say anything behind that. <laughs> Romans 8.29 says, For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to become conformed to the image of his Son. Listen, saints of God, there's nothing more important than you and I working to become like Jesus. At all costs, I'm not going to let you, because you have a bad attitude, stop me. I'm not going to let you, because you're stingy, or because you're, you're irritable, a bitter, stop me. Yes. I know what I have to become. And I'm striving to get there. Uh, Amen, I'm not perfect. No, Amen, that's right. But I know where I want to go. Yes, sir. I know what Christ has done for me. Yes. I know where he brought me from. Yes. I know how he's kept me. I know how every time I've been sick, how he made me well. Amen. I know that. I know oh, he's yeah. merciful and kind in my life. I know he saved my son's life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. So I have too much to be thankful for. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, yes. And what's a dollar? What's two dollars? You've been in church. To give somebody else. Yeah. People of God will bring five dollars to the house of God. It takes thirty-five dollars to the movies. Yes, it oh, He's got mad at me. Yeah. I can handle it. Praise the Lord. You bring, you bring five dollars here and think you've done something. All right. You know, wait, wait a minute. I usually give two dollars. <laughs> they run two, three, like you've yes. done something. Yes. And then you go to church. Wait a minute. Then you go to church. Then you go to movies. <laughs> Time does the war room start? Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, let me have a big thing yeah, of popcorn. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and you know what? Get one for my baby, too. <laughs> and let me have a, a large pop. You know what? Get one for my baby, too. Uh, oh, give us one of those Snickers bars right there. Uh, let, me, let me have some now and later. <laughs> Forty-five dollars. Uh -huh. Yeah. One, two. <laughs> yeah. But you bring five dollars to the house of God. Come on now. Oh, hallelujah! And you want God to shake your hand? Come on. You want the man of God to lay out and pray with you all night, and you only gave five dollars. Come on, say it, say it. So now it's all about you, and if that's how you feel, then you've got a lot of clutter. Huh? Yes. Got a lot of clutter. Yes. And then there are those unspoken prayers. Oh no. Help us, Jesus. I've been going through this week. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. The job has beat me up. Mm -hmm. Talking about laying me off. Uh -huh. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Rents mm. too. Cars behind. But you want to come to the house of God? Mm. <clears throat> Sit like there's nothing wrong. Mm. You want to pretend that everything is all right. Mm. And you don't know what you're going to do about tomorrow. Mm. Yes. And you know you're in the right place that if you have a need, that God will hear you cry. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. But you have an unspoken because you don't want others to know how desperate my you God. are. My Woo! My God. My God. You don't want others to know how much you're really yes. Yes. How much you're not sleeping at night. You're waking up a little light and worried about how I'm going to hold all this together. People have been talking about you, calling you all kinds of things. Things are breaking down in the house. But you want to come to the house of God and sit here like you have no issues at all. Now, the man that delivers a powerful message and opens the doors for prayers for those who have needs. But you don't move because yeah, yeah, yeah. others may realize that you're really going through something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my Lord. Jesus. So you're aware God can, can lift you up and bring you through. And God can speak yeah. to you and make a way for you and open a door or close right. a window. Right. 
window, yes. but right. you won't take advantage of it. All right, all right, all right. Yeah. Why the Lord? Yes, yes. And so you come in, uh -oh. battered and beat up, yeah. and then you leave, yeah. battered and beat up, yeah. and beat up. Preach, brother. Yes, I said, listen. I don't care what anybody says. Yes. I'm hurting people, God. I, I need somebody to, to, to pray for me. I need somebody to, pray. I need somebody to come lay hands on me to know how to pray. I need somebody to speak a word to my Lord for me. I need somebody to come and join hands with me, touch yeah. me, and agree that, that God can deliver me. Yeah. I'm not leaving until He does. Yes, yes, yes. But when you don't do that, because you're afraid of telling folks you're this. Oh my Lord! Listen here, here, this is me. I did one Sunday. I told him, I said, I, anybody here ever been a prostitute? Stand up. And one or two people stood up. Anyone here on drugs? Stand up. Mm -hmm. And somebody stood up. Mm -hmm. I said, anybody here uh, smoking weed and they're doing crack? Stand up. And so he stood up. Yes. I said, you know what? That's why we have church. That's right. Amen. It's for you. That's Amen. right. Amen. It's not for That's the right. same. That's right. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. That's the right. Uh, uh, they're well. Yeah. Yeah. They're yeah. well. Yeah. You know what I mean. But those of you that are sick. Yeah. 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 That's what church is about. Yeah. Yeah. And the church has got to stop putting a sick people's business in the street. In the street. Somebody will be able to come up here and say, listen, this week I cheated on my husband. Uh -huh. <laughs> I did some things I had no business doing. I got drunk. I, 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 I did all kinds of crazy things. Please, will somebody pray for God to deliver me? Without somebody going, oh, yeah, yeah, did yeah. you hear that? Come on, Holy God. God. My God. Mm. I thought she was saved. <laughs> Yes. But that's what the church is all about. Yes, sir. I don't listen. It, 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 if you think you know just as much as I do, you can't come to my church. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need you because if I know you know as much as I do, then one of us is enough. <laughs> to compete with me, I gotta tell you, listen, that's another church, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, well, welcome you, sir. Right down the road. Yeah, yeah. I saw a right way Baptist when I was coming in. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Yeah. And I saw such a free, such a self free deliverance on the other end. That's somewhere else yeah. to go. Yeah. But if, if there's something God has told you you need from me, then this is where you belong. Have a seat, pray, Lord. Let's give God some praise. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I had a young man come to me and tell me that he was he was a homosexual, and God sent to me. I said, "Wait a minute, here." <laughs> God didn't tell you that I'm a homosexual. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. He sent you to me because you're one. 